Hey guys, welcome to the Rusty Beauty's Garage and our new project that I kept talking about for months. Well, finally it is here. Meet the 1958 Triumph TR3. So it's a uh, body only on the frame, as you can see here, because I asked for the body to be on the frame when it comes here, because it needs a lot of body uh, parts replaced. I'm gonna give you a quick view around and then we're gonna talk with uh, our TR3 specialist, <laughs> Mr. Chef Tash. I don't know if I'm a specialist, but <laughs> we can talk for sure. You're definitely much better than me because I don't have experience with TR3. I haven't done one before. So that's why Mr. Chef Tash is here to give me some idea of where I should start, like basically to create a game plan. So uh, he's done, what have you done? You've done a 61 TR3? I've done a 60 and I'm working on a 59, but I okay. also had another 60 that I had torn apart to restore a 60. So yeah. technically I've had three. Technically I've had four, but now one of them is yours. So <laughs> between the three of us, we've got a 57, a 59 and a 60. So this 58 fits, fits right in the middle. middle. <laughs> we have the whole range. There you go. So uh, David is gonna tell us a little bit about the differences between all these cars because through the years, even though it's a short range that they made them through, they made them from 57 to 61, I think, or 62. Well, yeah. you're talking small mouth TR3 versus the large mouth TR3A, so. Yeah, so there was like, yeah. there was small mouth yeah. and then there was TR3, TR3A, yeah. TR3B, yeah. <laughs> like it was. Anyway, let's first take a look of the whole body and see what it looks like. So um, I think the most common areas that rust on these cars are in better shape than most of them, aren't they? Yeah, it so. actually looks like it's had some previous work done on it. We were just looking at the body tub and you can see things like the battery box had already been uh, not necessarily replaced, but sort of patched yeah. at one point. So it looks yeah. like they put a piece of metal in over top yeah, of the Yeah, the rusted box. one is still underneath. And still here. So as for every uh, year of Triumph TR, it doesn't seem to matter what year you're working on. Usually the battery box is rusted out in some way, shape, yeah. or form. So yeah. The TR3 is no different. So the battery box, I know you've got a new battery box that you're going to put in there. So yeah. That'll fix that up. But the areas in the trunk or the back here on the rear valance and the floor drops here and these panels are usually really bad on this car are surprisingly good, right? Yeah, so the body mount here on the inside. So if you look on the back here in the spare tire area, so yeah, so where the rear body uh, tub mounts to the frame, you usually rest through here on the inside but that actually looks pretty good. It looks like that's been repaired and replaced previously. And actually the spare tire carrier looks to be in pretty good shape. So that's good. The floor of the trunk is not good, but yeah. that can be replaced from above, right? The floor, the... Yeah, the only issue sometimes is it's, uh, since the spare tire carrier is attached to the floor yeah. base with spot welds all the way around, yeah. it can be a little bit difficult to change out this center section, but it's easily doable, but that's, kind of usual for these cars they rust out a lot too because the water gets trapped in here and it gets you know stuck yeah. so a lot of the times you'll see a lot of rust in these areas as well so that's kind of normal for these cars yeah so this is one of the differences on the uh, early cars for the later cars so when you get to like a 1960 I think the commission number swap over somewhere was around TS 60,000 this wheel uh, our opening is different on the later cars it's flat across on the earlier cars it's got this little bump out mm -hmm. Okay. So. This is a very common area to rust in here, the outer, uh, what do we call this? It's like the A po the B post. B post. Again, yeah. a very common area for these cars to rust out are the sills um, and the rear here um, of the wheel arch. And this, the back of the sill actually yeah. attaches to the back of this wheel arch. And this tends to, to, wear, uh, to rust out. And you can see it's been repaired here once already. In order to repair the inner sill, this area has to be cut out to get to the, the foot of the B-post that attaches to the inner sill. Okay. So that's been done once already, it looks yeah. like. 
We have new inner seals and outer seals here to replace those. This is our battery box. So we have parts to replace them. Yeah. So we have floors as well. Where did I put the floors? The yeah. floors are behind you. The You're floors are here. So we have new floors for inside. Uh, as you can see here, we have lots of extra metal. <laughs> yeah, this looks like it might have been an old stop sign or something, or a yield yeah. sign, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, like okay. two or three layers of metal yeah. there so the floors are going to be replaced the bulkhead over there on this side is pretty good even though i i saw some light when i was looking through outside in and i saw some light mm -hmm. this one is pretty rusted we're mm -hmm. going to see it from outside later yeah. but it looks better than what i expected usually uh, one of the other really rusty areas on these cars are here on the inside of these fenders where it sits against the radiator on either side these rust out really badly in here but these actually look really good yeah so that's that's a good thing so i'm surprised these are the common areas are uh in a good shape so here this bulkhead we need to replace or repair the bottom of it and this is kind of typical, uh, this is obviously the inner sill here as well, and you can see the rust at the front mm -hmm. here. It's kind of typical, like most TRs, again, a lot of dirt and debris gets trapped in behind the fenders, yeah. and this area gets tends to, to rust out quite a bit. Yeah, this seal, obviously. Yeah, so, the outer sill is basically just a cap that fits over the inner sill, so that's a, I think you've got brand new ones of those. They're really yes. just kind of almost like a decorative kind of piece. Yeah, I guess yeah. they are structural to a degree, but... Really, it's just a capping for the inner cell. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but the body has been uh, media blasted and then primered. So you can see some areas. I was asking David what he thinks. I think this is lead here, yeah. not body filler. Yeah, normally there's a seam here. And usually I think from the factory it was leaded over. Some guys will melt the lead out and leave the seam. And some guys will cover it over. So um i spoke with the owner and we're gonna leave it as it is yep. so the rear valance like we said is pretty good there are multiple dents in many areas though yeah so we're gonna have to deal with those you see it's been hit here and somebody obviously put screws here and pulled so we're gonna have to fix that and i think the area below here the sort of the closing panel below the rear valance i think they're in pretty good shape i know the owner had sent you some panels to replace yeah. the uh, the bottom, but I think that looks pretty good. I think you'll have to have a little bit better look at it. But again, a lot of that area can rust out on the bottom as well, but I think yeah. on this car, it's pretty good. Yeah, we have that panel. So if we have to, we're gonna replace it. And uh, here we have the bonnet, which is in pretty good shape. We don't have the boot lid. The owner forgot to bring it, but we might use our boot lid the one from the 57 that uh, because we're gonna have to do some i was mentioning mentioning to elaine about the just pointing out some of the differences on the earlier uh, bonnets versus the later bonnets on the raised plinth versus the non-raised plinth yeah. so this is an early bonnet yeah. shut up yeah. so here we have probably somebody sat for a photo <laughs> on, the, on this I, panel. It might have been a parade car. It probably had yeah. like a parade queen or something sitting yeah. here on the rear valence because yeah. it's kind of squished down a little bit. Yeah, it bent here in the middle and here. So we're going to have to straighten that. And for that, I'm going to need the boot lid, but I might use mine from the 57 to straighten this up. But you see there's multiple areas where it has like waves. So that's going to be a lot of uh, slapper and dolly work. There's lots of positives about the car for sure. I mean, this area back in here looks really good. I've seen these can be rusty, really rusty down in these areas. So this area looks pretty good. Yeah. I would say this saddle piece looks pretty good. Um, again, it's, uh, it's a wooden uh, structure on the inside of this, which you yeah. have, which you'll probably need to when you start panel fitting up, but uh, I'm sure yeah. the owner can drop that off. But uh, windscreen attachments look good. Here is the valance the front valance and uh, it's seen better days i think we'll just give them yours yeah <laughs> make, make it easier i think this one's in a little bit better shape yeah the color of this one matches my walls maybe yeah yeah here it is pretty bad yeah this I one's mean, gonna need a little bit of work because it's a little dent in the snout here dent over there 
Yeah. This gland has seen better days over here. It's had a lot of welding done over here. Yeah, I think that's like a stick welded or something. Yeah. So it needs a little bit of work, a little bit of love. That's unfortunate, but we're gonna do some work on it. The doors are in a really good shape. We looked at them at the bottom. They don't have, at least I don't see any rot. There might be some surface rust. There's some differences here that David was explaining yeah, about the we're, years. We are talking about the, the earlier years had the wood structure in the door across the top. Plus they have the square bottoms in the corners where the later doors have rounded bottoms. Okay. Uh, the, yeah, there's a little bit of a dent there. Uh, these are the earlier style um, side screen attachments, the wedge yeah. style versus yeah. the later style, so. Okay, the fenders, some of them are in a really good shape. So this one, front right, I believe, is in a pretty good shape. Some of them have areas like this where, I don't know if you see it, but it is wavy. Uh, there's a little split here that we're gonna need to weld. And again, an area that was dented and I guess they pulled it out with screws. This one actually is not too bad, but there's this line here, you see? Yeah. And that needs to be... Uh, it looks like somebody look. hit a garage, pulling out of a garage or post or something like that. It's a pretty yeah. good straight crease along there. Yeah. So. Here, this is really... Like, I can feel it very, very dented. Yeah. This one is not too bad, probably has some dents. But this one, we need to replace the whole bottom because it's rusted and then again it's a pretty typical spot for them to rust on these cars and that's yeah. why they sell these replacement panels because obviously it's typical yeah. so they sell these panels to put them in here so it's good you got that panel to make that yeah. repair a little bit easier it's unfortunate i was asking david if they sell panels for here repair panels but apparently they don't which is yeah it doesn't make sense to me because every restoration generally where you have to change the inner sill out you need to cut it here to expose the bottom of the b-post and where the sill is actually welded to the bottom of the b-post so you're always replacing this area down here so yeah. i believe they sell the whole outer structure <laughs> but they okay. don't sell just a repair section unfortunately but you can actually buy the whole outer cabinet yeah. up to where we talked about where that seam is where it's yeah. leaded but yeah they don't just sell that area unfortunately so we're gonna have some uh, fun making this repair panel for here. Piece of cake for you. Yeah. <laughs> for me, not so much. No, I have multiple English wheels and stuff. There's this area we talked about earlier too, and you'll probably want to speak to the owner about. Uh, this would have been for a speaker uh, for the original radio. A lot of the cars never came with it, but the cutouts were still there. So a lot of guys will go ahead and just blank this off because it's yeah. just a big open piece of uh, area to get you know, mm. extra wind in the car so that's basically it it came with some parts here the owner that sent me some um, parts that we might need like cage nuts and uh, extra panels of these that we said that we don't need they go like cuppings for there cuppings for the outside we had somewhere so we will see what we're gonna need what we won't need but as you can see, that's what I asked the owner to put the body on a uh, frame because the initial idea was he asked if he should bring me only the, the body. And I said, no, I need it to be on the frame because once I start removing floors and putting them back in, I need constantly to be able to check the door gaps, how the fenders fit and all that. So it needs to be on the frame. So we're going to do most of the work as much as we can as it is and only when we replace floors and we have a solid structure again with this brace and everything only then we're going to remove it from the frame and we're going to flip it on one side and do the welding underneath that's going to be required because i'm sure that there's going to be some welding required from underneath as well but 95 percent of the work is going to be done with the body on the frame yeah uh, suggested obviously Anna Lynn knows obviously one side at a time so if yeah. he's going to start on floors and seal replacement we'll do or he will do one side at a time I'm hopefully I'm going to be able to help a little bit on the project and we'll kind of forward to it but that's sort of the process is one side at a time yeah so I don't know I think 
like that's why David is here because I did I didn't have an idea how all the panels are put together, so I asked him to come and uh, help me make the game plan. So I think we have a game plan now. I should start by cutting this off, removing the outer seal, then the inner seal, then the floor, and then lining up the new parts. You'll probably have to do a little restructuring on the bracing because you want to be able to fit the door up, as we mentioned, to check before you start welding uh, sills back in place. So you want to be able to have the door on and off multiple times. So probably have to change the structure of the bracing a little bit. Yeah, because how Phil did it, he was the owner, he mounted it here to the door hinge location, but I'm going to have to relocate it and mount it here somehow inside so it's not in the way for the door unless do i even need the structure there before i remove the body of the frame i don't think i need it if i'm removing the body of the frame that's when i'm gonna need that structure we'll see i'm not gonna make that decision now but yeah that's kind of the whole project obviously in the meantime we're not gonna stop working on our 70 tr6 so it's going to be a little bit of this one, a little bit of this one. We'll see how it's going to go time-wise. I'm uh, only one guy. Well, there's this other guy who is willing to help, but he has full-time job. So he might come when I need a hand, of course, always he can come and help me. But most of the time I'm going to have to figure it out how to jiggle between these two projects. And I wanted, <laughs> we had the discussion about the GT6 Thursdays. <laughs> I, I keep texting them every Thursday saying, or every Wednesday saying GT6 day tomorrow. Yeah, but it's not I day. really want to, to do a little bit of work on that car as well. But anyway, and then also we have an upcoming project. Do you want to talk about that project yet or sure. not? Sure, uh, we're going to close this one out. I don't know when you're going to post this, but um, we have ordered some parts for the 62 Triumph TR4. As you know, probably if you watched our video series last year on Alin driving the car to and from the trials, um, the car struggled a little bit. We didn't change the engine when we did our restoration project. <laughs> and uh, Alin drove it for, it was about 1,300 miles, I think, with yeah. the uh, engine, the way we basically got it up and running. But now we've decided to take it a little step further and uh, we're gonna pull that engine out and we're gonna rebuild that. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, within the next, uh, well, we're going to probably pull the engine out this week, I would think, and then yeah. we'll uh, get a few more parts ordered. We've ordered a bunch of parts for it already, but obviously we needed to take some measurements and uh, yeah. figure out what exactly, how much more we need to order, mm -hmm. like bearings, for example, and then we'll uh, start putting it back together at some point. I mean, spring's not that far away. Yeah, spring is around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw it around yeah. that corner. <laughs> so I think baseball starts up in like spring training starts in like 15 ah. days. So, so we got to get crack a lacking on other okay. projects to get them ready for the road. So you're going to start seeing this guy posting a little bit more videos than what he did in the winter. <laughs> I know that everybody was uh, missing him, but yeah, he's going to start working now. How many projects do you have on the go? <laughs> like three, four? Four, five, who knows? And just gonna, like we're me. We're going to add the TR3 to the project list. So we'll hopefully I'll be able to help out a little bit on this. I, uh, as you know, I, I, I like working on them as much as I like driving them. So that's probably a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. When, when I have grinding, I don't like grinding. So that's when I'm going to call him to grind for me. <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right. I think, guys, it's a good introduction to this project. I think we're going to stop it here and um, we're gonna start in the next video we're gonna actually start working on the car i just wanted to show it to you because it's been uh almost two weeks since the car came and i haven't even started working on it but i want to start working on it as soon as possible so we can finish it as soon as possible it's gonna be one of these projects i'm hoping where it's gonna be mostly panel replacing then versus uh panel repairing which I usually do, like on my um, GT6 and uh, on the 1966 GT6. I did lots of floor repairs and uh, seal repairs and panel repairs, but here we're going to be replacing panels. So let's see how easy that's going to be. <laughs> it's going to be easier or not. Anyways, so links to his channel as well are going to be in the description of this video. And I believe I put already some 
up here. So, Mr. Chef Tash, David Tashingham, as known as Chef Tash. Stay tuned for videos from both of us on both channels, and we're gonna see you in the next one. Bye.